So yesterday, after announcing a brand new Nintendo Switch Lite colorway with a sort of NYX blue to it that I really enjoyed, Nintendo also announced that an Indie World presentation would be happening today as well. I play a lot of indie games. I like these Indie World presentations. Yes, sometimes the games just don't interest me because I realize that independent studios are able to do things sort of outside of the box comparative to bigger studios, but I do always like to check it out because there will at least be one or two games that interest me. Well, the latest Indie World presentation just wrapped up i want to go over the games that were announced during this what game caused me to literally shriek and like mess up my notes on this so it's kind of going to be a little bit weird towards the end of the video and what games i'm looking forward to so if this is your first time on the channel be sure to hit that subscribe button be sure to like the video and without any further ado let's talk about this latest nintendo switch indie world presentation so kicking things off we had a game called road 96 which I, you know, at first I was like, I don't really know about this, but the more I saw it, like the more I really liked it. It's like a weird hitchhiking game where you and a buddy are going on like sort of an adventure. It started out like a game that was going to be like, you know, super story driven, sort of like, you know, life is strange and stuff, but it actually had some interesting gameplay mechanics. Now, allegedly this game is inspired by like 90s road movies from the developers. So I think you could sort of expand upon that and do a lot with it. There's a bunch of different ways for the story to play out, how you get to your final destination where you're trying to go and like you're hitchhiking with people you're like on a bus you're in a taxi the graphics look pretty cool and there's a bunch of different scenarios you end up in as well with characters reacting to you and dialogue and even like some gunplay and stuff like this game just looks sort of all over the place but i feel like it has a good vibe to it and i'm actually pretty interested in this game it really at first i was just kind of like eh, you know i don't quite know but the more i saw of it the more interested i became in it road 96 will be be coming out later in 2021 for the Nintendo Switch and it's definitely a game I have on my radar. Next up was a game called Aerial Knights Never Yield. It's basically a hip hop inspired endless runner that has you doing your standard parkour stuff. It looks like there's some throwback sort of retro themed levels in the game as well. You're taking place in a very Tokyo style futuristic Detroit, which is where the creator of this game is from. You know, I like the art style of the game. Endless runners aren't really my cup of tea, but I do think it looks interesting enough. There is a demo available today on the Nintendo Switch, should you want to check it out, and the full game will be coming out on May 19th. Next up, we learned about Last Stop and Hindsight. Last Stop, I mean, it looks looks all right. Kind of, you know, that Life is Strange vibe to it, which isn't really my cup of tea. Very story-driven, character-driven stuff. As far as the gameplay is concerned, I'm sure it's very minimal. Just sort of like a modern point-and-click style game that we see a lot in this genre. And then Hindsight was, was definitely very artsy-fartsy. Like, not saying that's a bad thing, just saying it's not a thing that really appeals to me. The minimalistic art style, the very story, driven stuff the lack the fact that there's probably going to be not a whole lot of gameplay in it whatsoever uh july 2021 for last stop and hindsight will be coming out later on this year i'm probably going to pass on both of these games because it's just not my cup of tea but maybe it is yours so let me know in the comments down below Next up, Ollie Ollie was a skateboarding game that I believe came out on the Wii U. I believe that's where I originally played it. And it's getting a new game called Ollie Ollie World. And the gameplay honestly reminds me a lot of the original game. Now, they redid the art style completely, which was more pixel based. Now it's much more cartoony. And this game, whereas Ollie Ollie was just about, you know, getting high scores and whatnot, yes, you still do that, but it's definitely more story driven as you meet different characters on your adventure going towards Nirvana. Uh, yeah, okay. That's cool. And there's different side quests in the game as well. This game will be coming out this winter. I kind of wish they would have went maybe in a bit of a different direction with this game, but I understand that the original Ali Ali gameplay was very fun and very addictive once you sort of picked up how to play it. So I'm looking forward to this game with Ali Ali World. Next up was a game called The Longing, which has you waiting 400 days in a cavern for a legendary thing to happen, and it's it's actually in real time. Like, like legit 400 days. Um, it looks super weird. It's a point and click adventure game. I like the art style of it, but 400 days for, for something to happen. Like, can we just like fast forward the clock or something and get to some spoilers so we can know how the game ends? Like, I don't know. That just seems really bizarre to me. You do sort of different things to pass the time. You know, I do like the art style, like I said, but I, I just don't have 400 days to invest into this game. It will be available later today, though. The next game was a game called There Is No Game. I have absolutely 
no idea what's going on here. It looks like a bunch of retro inspired mini games, but looks kind of neat. It comes out later today. Maybe I'll check it out. Maybe I won't. And then we got one of the big things from this event, a new look at the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles video game, Shredder's Revenge, that is coming out. And yes, 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 show me more of this game. You know what? You actually shown me enough of this game. I already want to buy it. I already want the physical. I already want the collector's edition. They are using the 87 Turtles design for the characters. The developers of the game said that it's heavily inspired by Turtles in Time. And there's all, st it just looks so great. Like there's so many throwbacks in terms of visual style stuff and just little callbacks to the original Turtles in Time. Pizza is prevalent in the game, of course. There's combo attacks, tons of areas from the source material. We got to look at Bebop and Rocksteady in this as well. Big, chunky, beautiful sprites. This game just looks so awesome. It's of course being done by the people who did Streets of Rage 4. So if you have any sort of worry, oh, is this game going to be any good? Like, of course it's going to be good. It's going to be freaking amazing. And I'm so glad that we got a different look at this game and a new trailer from this game during this Indie World presentation. Because things like this, this is an indie game. Yes, it's a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game, but it's also an indie game. So definitely a huge highlight of this event for me, showing off the Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge game. I absolutely love this. I hope it comes out as soon as humanly possible because I can't wait to play it. Next up was a game called Chris Tales, which I feel like is a game I've heard about before. Maybe it's out on other platforms or something. I don't know. I've just heard that name before. Maybe I'm confusing it with something else. It's a turn-based uh, RPG based on time travel mechanics. And really, the graphics look absolutely beautiful. Like, I love this visual style. It looks so clean and crisp. And the whole, you know, time mechanic that uses in the game, you can actually, like, go back in time so that the character you're fighting against is, like, younger and weaker and stuff like that. It seems really interesting. This game will be available on July 20th. Next up was a game called Getsuma Feden Undying Moon. You know, just rolls right off the tongue. Now, this is a hack and slash rogue like experience with a beautiful visual style. Definitely vanillaware vibes when it comes to this game. I really like it. It's a rogue like, so I don't know how much I'm going to like it, but I definitely like the visual style. And you know what's weird about this? This is a Konami game. This is this is coming to us from Konami. This game will be available later on in 2022, actually. So kind of weird for Konami to be involved in this as well. But yeah, it is what it is. Here's a game that really impressed me, Aztec Forgotten Gods. Now, this is a 3D action adventure game based on Aztec mythology in a really nice looking world. You have like these big mythological gods that you interact with and also fight as well. A bunch of different styles in the environments that you visit. It's not something like just sort of, you know, when you think of Aztec mythology, you probably think of a lot of, you know, darker colors, you know, maybe that clay sort of brown and stuff like this, but this definitely had a lot of colors going on into it. Obviously, it's utilizing source material from Aztec mythology, but sort of modernizing it into a more, you know, interesting visual style i think and one thing i really liked was the music going on during this trailer it was like straight up sepultura like 90 sepultura stuff going on here and i was like okay if this music is in the game which i feel like it will be this game has a lot of potential definitely really enjoyed what i saw from this game i definitely want to see more this will be a fall 2021 release for the nintendo switch next up was skull the hero slayer which is a 2d retro pixel style roguelike platformer i, I we've never heard of a game like that before but there is a twist with this game you play as a skeleton character who upgrades his abilities by taking on different heads and you know killing enemies and then you take your head and then you get their ability so there's like 90 different characters you could play as in the game for what it is i think the game itself looks absolutely beautiful it looks very fast very frantic but i'm just so like done with 2d side scrolling retro uh, roguelike games like it, it, I, I've had enough I've had enough and there's nothing wrong with these games but there's just been so many of them this game will be coming out in summer of 2021 maybe I will lessen my stance on this but you know I, I'm just tired of the roguelike games then we got a sizzle reel and this is the part where I mess things up because I'm gonna leave off a bunch of games because something happened during this sizzle reel that was like amazing so we got art of rally which is a top-down racer definitely looks like a throwback to the old style of racing games that used to happen a lot kiwi which is like a weird game with birds like kiwi birds i guess or something like that labyrinth city which kind of looks like where's waldo come to life and you know i like where's waldo weaving tides which is like a weird shoot 'em up thing and then everything just went off the rails because 
Forever Entertainment finally showed it. Forever Entertainment, of course, did Panzer Dragoon Remake, and they were working on another remake that things got kind of quiet. People were like, oh, is this going to happen? House of the Dead Remake. Give it to me. Give I want light gun games on my Switch, and it's House of the Dead. I, I still remember the first time I played House of the Dead in the arcade, the Saturn version of the game, even though it looked like ass. Like I didn't care. It was House of the Dead, and they finally showed House of the Dead Remake, a little teaser of this, and yes, 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 yes. I was literally sitting here watching it on my second screen here and i'm just watching it and I'm just like yeah like i started screaming my neighbors probably think i was getting possessed and then they showed off a bunch of other games that will probably interest you i'll just sort of show what they showed off here i think fez was one of the games which is a game that i have not heard that name in quite a long time but yeah i i pretty much just lost it when i saw the house of the dead because i am so excited for that game and it's great to see a game like this a light gun shooter coming to the nintendo switch gonna be interesting to see how they managed to pull it off but i hope they pull it off greatly and yes some other games were announced here and then we had the end game the game that you know usually is a bit of a surprise was it going to be hollow knight was it going to be sports story no it was actually a new game that we had not heard about before and that's oxen free to lost signals this game will be coming out sometime in 2021 oxen free the original game was actually very very popular got a physical release as well i own the physical release i'm pretty sure but i don't know if i ever got around to playing this game but i do know a lot of people enjoy this game sort of like a maniac mansion style game from what i recall and it looks like they're gonna you know go more into the sci-fi stuff that was pretty prevalent in the original game so definitely a big surprise there at the ending so overall, what did I think about this presentation? I mean, it was an Indie World presentation, and there was more things that I liked in this presentation than in some previous Indie World presentations. I mean, obviously, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and House of the Dead Remake are going to catch my attention. Like, those are games tailor-suited to me. Road 96 kind of surprised me. Definitely a game that I now have on my radar. Um, Aztec Forgotten Gods, once again, another game that surprised me during this event, and I had it on my radar. Yes, there was your standard 2D stuff that we always see during this. Yes, there was your art fartsy games in this as well but like that's what these events are about they're about accumulation of different games and to have some big name games right alongside of smaller games you know that's a good rub like people are going to be talking about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles people are going to be talking about House of the Dead so if you're a smaller developer and you get your game right alongside of this like that's a win for you because you're getting all this notoriety so overall a solid show I definitely really enjoyed Aztec Forgotten Gods Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles House of the Dead definitely awesome awesome stuff there and and there was some other stuff there that you know sort of piqued my interest as well so let me know in the comment section down below what you thought of this event did you shriek at your screen like i did when house of the dead remake was shown because i mean it's house of the dead man it's, it's, it's like it's like the best light gun game ever if it's not the best it's definitely up there with some of the classics and as always guys thank you for checking out this video if you are new to the channel make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications check out other videos on the channel as well and as always i'll catch you guys on the next one later